My friend, I want you to know you hear the voice of God. Spend time with God. Listen, and He will begin to reveal to you. He's going to speak to you. It's going to come as an inward witness, an inward understanding. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back. This is Alan Bagg, and we're on our Wisdom for Life broadcast. This week, we've had a great time having a look at how God leads us so that we can fulfill His great plan and purpose that He has in our lives. Now, if you did miss any of the programs this week, I encourage you to catch up. We have them on our website, or you can get a hold of them by giving us a call but we've already had a look in great detail how God's desire is for us to know what His plan and His purpose is for our lives. The reason Jesus was so successful in His ministry was because He said, I don't do anything unless I've seen my Father do it, and I don't say anything unless I hear my Father say it. He was guided by God Himself. Even though He was God while He walked on the earth, it's because of the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit in His life. And then He told His disciples that when He goes, He'll not leave them as orphans, but that He'll leave them another helper, the Holy Spirit. And that same Holy Spirit would guide them into all truth. That what He hears, He will tell them. And He'll show them things to come. That's the promise we have of having the Holy Spirit within our lives. Jesus said you would do the same works He did and greater. How's that possible? Because when I hear God's purpose for my life and I'm led by Him into these things, I will succeed. Remember Paul said in Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, that those that are born again, those that are sons, God has sent forth into the Spirit, His Son, into our hearts, crying out, Abba Father. So we hear the Holy Spirit within our heart. The moment you're born again and you have an awareness and the knowledge that you are born again, there's just a sense, yes, I know I'm a child of God. You already are hearing the voice of God. And he said in Romans 8 verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So really saying that the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. Jeremiah was told by God in chapter 1, verse 4, he said, The word of the Lord came to me, saying. So God speaks to us through His word, but not only just through the scriptures, but through leading and direction. See, that's very often people say, I want to hear the voice of God. If you take the word of God and read it out loud, that is God speaking to us. And faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But you know, even though... I've read this Bible from cover to cover many times before. I've not yet found the call where it said, Alan Bagg is called to plant a church in Cape Town, South Africa. No, that had to come from the Spirit of God. I was led to do this. And you can see that through the leading and following of God's plan, it's manifested powerfully because it was His desire for it to happen. But I had to hear that. I had to be tuned in to hear Him call me. And so the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. So every one of us, God already has a plan for us. When you're born, you're already born with that plan in mind. All the gifts and the talents you need to fulfill that plan is already inside of you. Very often the reason why we struggle and battle in life is because we're trying to do our own thing. We're kind of floundering around in the dark, trying this, trying that, and never really fulfilling anything significant. And yet when we find out what God has called us to do, and you walk out His plan and purpose, it's like that's where people say, I was born to do this. It manifests in you. Because now you're like what I described right at the beginning, that fish swimming in water. A fish was designed for water. It can't climb a tree. And so it was designed so that when it's in water, it can flourish and that gift manifests. So the same way you, when you find out what you're called to do, it's like a fish finding its place in water. And you are able to succeed in what God's called you to do. And so we had a look. We saw in the Old Testament how Samuel was instructed by Eli that when he hears God calling, he first of all thought it was Eli calling him. That's how clear it can be sometimes. 
But then when Eli realized that that was God speaking to Samuel, he said what he needed to do was go before God. Next time he senses that calling, when he hears that voice, he's needed to say, Lord, speak, your servant is listening. So you can see there's a, an adjustment by faith. And the moment he did that, he heard God's voice very clearly. Now, with that in mind, let's have a look at John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus speaking here. He says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now listen to that. This is Jesus. Now you know when Jesus says something, He means what He says. He is accurate. He says, My sheep hear my voice. Now, the only question left here is, are you following Jesus as your shepherd? If your answer is yes, Jesus is my shepherd, then you are his sheep. And Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. He doesn't say you will hear it. You do hear his voice. Someone may say, but I haven't heard it. No. Jesus said, you hear it. Now, the, here's the point that I'm making. If Jesus says you hear his voice, you do. However, if I thought I haven't heard him, then what I did here, I may have confused and not even realized it was God speaking to me. You know, sometimes this can happen. You suddenly have an awareness of something. Has that ever happened where you, 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 you're thinking of somebody and the next moment the phone rings and it's that person? Have you ever had a situation where you say, you know, something told me. Well, it's not really something, it's someone. People talk about a hunch or a sixth sense. It's, or something they say, woman's intuition. It's not just women that have that. It, it is every person. God is speaking. I really, I truly believe God is speaking to all of us, saved or unsaved. He's speaking. But if we're not listening for it, we'll miss it. Just the same way, I've used this example before and I'll say it here again. You are watching me right now on a television screen. But you know that there are other channels. If you flip channel up or down, don't do it now. <laughs> you don't want to miss this, so stay with me. But if you press channel up or down, you will find that there are other programs happening now, but they're not on your screen. Why? Because you tuned into this particular channel. Now, if for any reason this screen suddenly went blue, uh, you phone the transmitter, the broadcaster, you say, listen, I'm not getting any signal here. I can't see your picture. They look at their system and they say, sir, we, or ma'am, we, we are sending out a signal, uh, but there's something wrong. You need to reboot your system. You can't say, no, they're not sending a signal. Yes, the signal is in your room. There are cell phone signals, there are radio signals. There's all kinds of signals happening right now through your, wherever you're watching this, it is there. So if you had a radio, you could tune into a particular station, you would hear it. So that sound right now, those, those waves are in your room there where you're watching this program, but you're not hearing it because you're not tuned into it. The reason you're seeing this particular program is because you're tuned into this channel. So the same way God is speaking to you. But for me to hear it, I need to make sure I'm tuned in. And that's what Eli was teaching Samuel. God does speak, but you need to position yourself. Okay, Lord, I'm listening for you to speak to me. So now the signal is out there. Jesus said that I hear his voice. Then I'm not going to ever again say I don't hear his voice. By faith, just begin there. Remember, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Jesus said you hear his voice. So if you hear his voice, you do. So don't worry now that you don't know what it sounds like. Just by faith right now say, I hear the voice of God. Now that I know I hear the voice of God, I want to position myself. Now to help you with that, let's have a look here. Come with me to Matthew chapter 16. Jesus is speaking to his disciples here. And in verse 13, we see when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, listen to who he describes himself, son of man. Just, just even just underline that because I'm going to refer to that now. 
Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? I want you to notice he didn't even comment on the answer. Jesus is more interested in who you think he is than what other people. Now, obviously, he's interested in the other people when he speaks to them individually. But when he's speaking to you, it doesn't matter who people think or say God is. Who's he to you? Who is he to you? Who do you say that I am? Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Now, what did Peter just say? He says, You are the Christ, the Son. Underline the Son of the living God. Now, Jesus says, Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You see, up to that point, Jesus hadn't referred to himself as the Son of God. If you have a look at verse 13, he says, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So he referred to him as the Son of Man. Why? Because Adam was born into the earth, and he's come as down that lineage. He was born into the earth. Now, he wasn't born of the seed of a man. He was born of the seed of a woman. But he's talking about himself here as the last Adam. He is here as the last Adam. He's on the earth as a man. And now he asks them, who do people say about, what do people saying about me? And Peter says an amazing thing. He says, you're the son of the living God. Now notice, Jesus answered and said to him. Now answer is usually in reply to a question. So when I look at what Peter said, I don't see a question there. He says, you are the Son of the living God. So we have to look at this slightly differently because today you and I know that He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Say, well, yeah, well, Peter said He's your Christ, the Son of the living God. That's obvious. That's who Jesus is. Up to that point, no one knew that. And in fact, it under Jewish tradition, it was blasphemous to call somebody the Son of God. Remember, they wanted to stone Jesus one day and... He said, for what purpose are you stoning me? Why Why would you want to kill me? And they said, because in calling God your Father, you make yourself equal with Him. In other words, by calling Himself a Son of God, that's what He was saying. God's my Father. Then by implication, you're the Son. That was considered blasphemous. And so for somebody to step out, and remember, Peter's a Jew at that point, and he said, you the Christ, the Son of the living God. It just came out of him. Now, we know Peter is quite famous for, for saying things, you know, very quickly, just speaking right out without thinking about what he's saying. And so I can just imagine he's sitting there and he's had this revelation has been rising up on the inside of him. And Jesus says, who do men say that I am? And they talking about, you know, Elijah, John the Baptist, Jeremiah. And he says, that doesn't matter. Who do you say that I am? And it blurts out of Peter. You, Christ, the Son of the living God. He's like, what did I just say? And Jesus answers that. He says, no, don't worry about it. I know you may be concerned that what you just said, but that wasn't given to you by flesh and blood. I didn't tell you that. No man has told you that, but listen to what he says. I want you to listen to the wording. Blessed are you, Simon Bajon. Now, what does blessed mean? Empowered. Okay, so now because of the statement, you are now in a more powerful place. That which you're called to do is empowered. That's what the blessing is. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. And then he creates them. And then verse 28, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue, take dominion. What's that blessing? It's a spoken word that empowers them to do what they're called to do. When God speaks into your life, What you need to be doing, you have the power and ability to do that. That's what the blessing is. It empowers what you're called to do. Simon Peter, you've stepped into the blessing. You are now empowered for what you're called to do. What gave him that blessing? Listen to what he says. Flesh and blood has not revealed us. Underline the word revealed. Remember I spoke right at the beginning of the week. 
where we spoke about the revelation that was revealed in your heart, talking about how God reveals in you your purpose. We hear it in our hearts. It is not something you hear audibly. He didn't say flesh and blood has not told you this. He says flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You've been spending time with God, Simon Peter. You've heard from God himself. He revealed this to you. He didn't hear it audibly. He didn't hear God speak to him in a way saying, you, this, this is my son, this is Christ, the son of the living God. No, he sensed it in his heart. And what he sensed in his heart, he spoke out of his mouth. And Jesus said, the fact that you heard that, that was revealed to you by the Father. And because you were able to express what you said, you are now blessed. And because you're blessed, he says, I say to you that you are Peter on this rock. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. My friend, I want you to know you hear the voice of God. Jesus said so. And I want you to do the same thing. Just like Simon Peter, he didn't go and listen to a man to hear it. Just like we saw Samuel when he when Eli realized he was hearing from God, go before God and say, Lord, speak. Ask your servant hears. I want to encourage you. Jesus is speaking to you. He's revealing to you what you need to be blessed. You are blessed. You've received the blessing of God in your life. The day you were born again, you are blessed. Now, for that blessing to empower you in your call, you want to hear what that call is. Spend time with God. Listen. And he will begin to reveal to you. He's going to speak to you. It's going to come as an inward witness, an inward understanding. Now, that's all we have time for this week. We're going to get into this more detail. I'm going to coach you and show you how you can walk in these things in, in future programs. But for this week, I really just want to encourage you. You do hear the voice of Jesus. Just worship him. Minister with him. Take time. Just draw aside from all the noise of the world. And as you listen for him... You will sense in your heart, this is what I need to do. This is who I need to speak to. I'm, I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. As a child of God, I am led by the Spirit of God. And He will lead you into the fullness of His promise that He has designed for you to be. Isn't that awesome? Well, I've got something very, very important to share with you. So don't go away. Watch this and I'll be right back. What an awesome week of study we have had. You know, the Word of God brings life to us. And we understand that in that life, we are able to live the life that God has designed for us. He leads us, He guides us, and He shows us. He is a generous God. He's a God who loves us. He has given to us generously. He gave us life. He's blessed us with every blessing. He supplies every need. He delivered His Word to us. He's given us His Holy Spirit. We serve an awesome, generous God. Now, as sons of God, as being born again of God, we live this generous life. Just the same way He leads us in how to pray for people. He leads us in the call that we're in. He leads us in the families that we are in, where to live, guides our lives. He also shows us how to live the same life that He is, as a generous God. That's why when Paul wrote you in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you have a look at verse 6, it says, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So through the word of God, he's revealing to us the principles of the kingdom of God. That if I put one seed in the ground, I can only expect one bush. If I put 10 seeds in the ground, I will get 10 bushes. It, it's... This is the proportion that your seed will always produce according to this amount of seeds. Your harvest is determined by the amount of seeds that you sow. And God wants to reveal to us that we can live a generous life by being led by Him through the Word of God. So He shows us in verse 7, So let each one give. So Paul uses the instruction of sowing seed and then links that to our giving. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity. God loves a 
cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Why? Because He's a giver. When we are cheerful givers, we mimic the life of God. We become as He is. And He is a giver, generous giver. And so he's, Paul is saying, yeah, don't be stingy or sparingly. It's revealed through the Word of God that if we live a generous life of God, if we live the way God does, not grudgingly, of necessity, because we have to, not because we are pressurized by anybody. And then he says, verse 8, when we live that way, we live generously and we give generously. God loves that. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And you always have all sufficiency in all things and have an abundance for every good work. So if we want to see the generous life of God manifesting, we live generously. And so once again, when it comes time to sowing God's seed, as you know, on a Friday, this is our time of giving. I will never, ever pressurize anybody. I don't want to ask anybody for anything. It has to be as you purpose in your heart. But I do encourage you, be generous. And if God has called you to give into another ministry, do that. Give where God leads you to give. For those that have sown into this ministry, I want to thank you. We appreciate it. Because of your generous giving, we can carry on the work of God and God supplies every need. And I can stand in agreement with you according to this word of God. If you've sown generously, you're going to reap generously. So let's pray that prayer right now. The details are on the screen. If God has led you to give today, you can do that online through any of our facilities. Let's pray. Father, I pray for my dear friend and my partner as they sow their seed today, according to the promise of your word, they are sowing generously. And as they do, they reap generously. And you make grace abound towards them. They always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. Now, my God, you supply all they need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We believe that and thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, my friend. I believe that prayer is answered and it's done. Welcome to Come Celebrate. Yes, hey, Alan and Jeline Bag invite you to join us for Come Celebrate 2023, taking place at the Bay Christian Family Church from the 28th till the 30th of March. God's ready to do a great work. Great work. Great work. And this week is about getting your getting eye your on, the ball. on the ball. Right. What has God said? Get ready for get it. Ready for get it. your hands ready. Get your feet ready. Get your whole posture ready. Be prepared and ready. This year, we will be getting together with anointed guest speakers and artists to step into God's promises of enhancement and expansion in this year ahead. And those that are ready to receive, receive will catch it. So That's you right. just need to be prepared to receive whatever He has for you this week. Amen. He is Amen. going to get it to you. This is a free conference, but register to be part of Come Celebrate 2023 taking place at the Bay Christian Family Church from the 28th till the 30th of March. If my Jesus says I hear His voice, bless God, I hear His voice. When Jesus spoke, many received by faith the things they believed for, and when believing the things they heard, they saw His promises come to pass. If He said, I hear His voice, and He says, I came that you may have life, and life abundantly, I don't want to live in a little specter of life. We have been given a whole book of promises, and when received by faith, we too can walk in abundance in every area of our lives. If He says He supplies all my need, why am I just believing for my milk and rent? I want whole life prosperity because He's given me everything. To order your series, contact Allen Back Ministries by either calling our number or purchasing your series online. Most of us are familiar with the scripture where it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And for me, for many years, it was that I would go and read the scripture. And of course, that does develop faith because the word of God is the voice of God. This is God speaking to us, but now it's been recorded and it is what God has said. So when you read the scriptures, faith does come. But you know that faith also comes 
when you hear God's specific instruction, when He tells you to do something specifically, a faith rises in you that cannot be shut down because when God has said to do something and you walk in that and see the manifestation of what He said was going to happen, you become extremely confident in your walk with God. The ability to hear God speak and guide you and lead you and direct you transforms your Christian life to a whole new level. And so often people battle with that and say, I wish I could hear God the same way. Well, as we've been studying, Jesus said that we would hear His voice. And so as I hear His voice and follow after Him, I'll succeed. But it's me having ears to hear. I need to stop to listen. What does it mean to have ears to hear? And that's what the series is about. I encourage you, get a hold of it, listen to it. It's going to help build and strengthen your faith. And by hearing this word, faith will rise for you to have ears to hear what the Father is saying. And when you hear what the Father is saying, you're going to walk successfully in His call in your life as well. So get yours today. It is the weekend and it's time for us to get together in our various places of worship. If you're not yet in a spiritual word-based church, find one in your town and make sure that you join up there with the pastor and say, I've come to be a part of this house of God and I want to give him my gifts and my talents. And you will see that what God has led you to do will begin to manifest in and through your life. If you are in Cape Town, you're welcome to join us here in our various campuses. If I am in the building, please come up to me, shake my hand, let me know that you're here. I'd love to meet you. Other than that, you have a great weekend. This is Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Thank you once again for your faithful support and prayer. We have seen so many lives touched as a result of your partnership. If you're not in partnership with us yet, join us and make a difference in this world. At allenbaggministries.org, you can find out more about Alan Bagg, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Alan Bagg Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do.